Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, an avalanche of cheap Chinese products drowning the global market. How are U.S. industries at risk? China's overcapacity distorts global prices and production patterns and hurts American firms and workers, as well as firms and workers around the world. The majority of American solar consumers are choosing products made in China rather than U.S. goods. How should we read the trend? An expert tells us more. Another group of U.S. lawmakers visit Taiwan with a message shared during a meeting with Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen. And for the first time, the Netherlands is publicly condemning China's cyber espionage. Find out what the country's prime minister told Chinese regime leader Xi Jinping. Before we turn to today's top story, we'd like to share an announcement about our special coverage this Saturday detailing Chinese Communist Party infiltration in U.S. media. Take a look. A troubling agenda revealed certain Western media outlets are publishing content in line with propaganda from a tyrannical regime, the Chinese Communist Party, at least when it comes to a major human rights violation committed against practitioners of the Falun Gong spiritual movement inside China. And at the center of that problem, really unfortunately, is the paper of record, the New York Times. Why was this journalism so off the mark? And so here was the leadership of the New York Times meeting with the leadership of the largest tyrannical communist regime on earth. Watch our exclusive interview with Levi Browdy, executive director of the Falun Dafa Information Center, this Saturday on NTD, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. That's this Saturday at 11 a.m. on NTD or 9.30 p.m. on Epic TV. A threat facing the global green economy, a flood of cheap exports from China. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen saying Wednesday that she's concerned about China dumping excess products into the global market. Now we see excess capacity building in new industries like solar, EVs and lithium-ion batteries. China's overcapacity distorts global prices and production patterns and hurts American firms and workers, as well as firms and workers around the world. The situation is a dire one for sectors like solar, electric vehicles, and lithium-ion batteries, pillars of the green energy industry. China makes over 80 percent of the world's solar panels. Chinese solar panel makers have virtually wiped out European producers. U.S. solar manufacturers are also swamped with Chinese competition. The low price tags on Chinese exports are because they're backed by state subsidies. American solar makers still struggle to compete, even with subsidies from Washington and U.S. tariffs on foreign goods. In the EV industry, over 60 percent of global electric car sales come from China. President Biden warned China is determined to dominate the future of the auto market and has launched an investigation into Chinese smart cars. This February, a U.S. trade group warned cheap Chinese autos pose an extinction-level threat to the U.S. auto sector. Tesla founder Elon Musk voiced similar concerns. Chinese automaker BYD recently beat Tesla in its global sales. Musk warned if Washington doesn't establish trade barriers, Chinese automakers will demolish most other car companies in the world. China also dominates the lithium-ion battery industry. Those are the batteries that power electric vehicles. The country controls almost 60 percent of the global EV battery market and also makes over 80 percent of the cells put into EV batteries. Even some U.S. battery makers still count on Chinese-made components. China has dumped its steel and aluminum in the past. This maintained production and employment in China but forced industry in the rest of the world to contract. Yellen said she would raise the issue of dumping exports to China in an upcoming visit, though it's unclear when the trip would take place. Media reports are warning that the cheap Chinese parts have nearly eliminated the solar supply chains in the U.S. What's behind the low prices on the Chinese products and how are American consumers feeling the impacts? 
Kelly Sloan, a senior fellow at the Energy and Environment at the Centennial Institute, weighs in. U.S. solar manufacturers are in a dire situation as they struggle to compete with Beijing-backed Chinese solar supply chains. China is the world's top supplier in the global solar industry and produces nearly three times more than the global need. For the American uh, solar manufacturers, it, it is bad. You know, the, uh, uh, economically, it's doing what trade is supposed to do and allow, you know, allowing the uh, whoever can produce something cheaper to, to get it on the market. So for consumers of, of uh, solar panels, it's pretty good news. You know, it's the price down. Kelly Sloan is a senior fellow in energy and environment at the Centennial Institute. He says free trade or market principles might not work when it comes to China. Again, China doesn't operate under a free and open market, which is what free trade depends on. How can Chinese products be sold so cheaply? According to this year's data, the price of Chinese solar products is about half that of American-made products. That owes to two main factors, Beijing-backed subsidies and cheap labor, especially forced labor. Washington has banned imports of polysilicon from the Xinjiang region. Almost all the solar panels in the world require the material. Most of Chinese polysilicon is made in the western region of Xinjiang. The U.S. government has accused China of committing crimes, including forced labor, against members of the Uyghur ethnic group in the region. Back to subsidies, the state-backed financial aid appears in different ways, ranging from low energy costs to cheap land deals for new solar plants and state-supported loans with low interest rates. Last year, Biden's administration invested millions of dollars to support the U.S. solar supply chain, but China managed to seize the opportunity to improve its own profits. What's really puzzling about all this is why the administration is really pushing all these subsidies for solar, which only you know, some of the existing solar manufacturers like in China can take advantage of and have taken advantage of when solar is not a huge part of our electric makeup. More and more Chinese companies are opting to ship their solar panel components to the U.S. for the final assembly process. By doing so, they can avoid high tariffs or trade barriers. That means China can benefit from the same U.S. subsidies designed to fight cheap Chinese goods and boost sales for American-made products. Chinese electric vehicle sales in Europe are surging. They're expected to take up over 25% market share in Europe this year. That's up about 5% from last year. China-made EVs accounted for about a third of EV sales in France and Spain in 2023. Western brands like Tesla still dominate, but Chinese brands are rapidly expanding. The reported figures come as the European Commission investigates government subsidies given to Chinese EV makers, creating concerns about unfair competition. Another congressional delegation is in Taiwan. Congressman Jack Burgum reiterating U.S. support during a meeting with Taiwan's president on Thursday. Our delegation is here to show Congress's continued support for our partnership. We will continue to assure our colleagues that this strategic relationship is key for the future security of the region. The congressional delegation is a bipartisan one. They're also set to meet with U.S. personnel while in Taiwan, though the delegation did not specify if they were military or civilian. The Chinese Communist Party sees Taiwan as its own territory despite never having ruled it. The U.S. doesn't have formal diplomatic relations with the island, but Washington is Taiwan's most important arms supplier. A delegation from the European Parliament also visited Taiwan on Wednesday. It is a fact of our times that authoritarian regimes and dictators of different colors are coordinating their efforts internationally, opposing human rights, opposing a rules-based international order. Against that backdrop, we strongly believe that it is important that team democracy works together well. The members of parliament met with President Tsai Ing-wen and lawmakers during the visit. 
a multi-million dollar ad campaign targeting senators who are up for re-election. TikTok has released a new commercial across major battleground states. Its message blocked the bill that could ban the app from U.S. app stores. The ad features TikTok users who rely on the app to make a living. Its message is now spreading across Nevada, Montana, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Ohio. Experts and U.S. officials fear that TikTok is sharing sensitive user data with Beijing. Earlier this month, the House passed legislation that would require the social media app to divest from its Chinese parent company ByteDance or else face a ban from all U.S. app stores. Despite receiving overwhelming support in the lower chamber, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is still deciding whether to put the bill on the Senate floor. President Biden said he would sign the bill if it reaches his desk. Tensions are rising between the Netherlands and China. The Dutch prime minister said he discussed a cyber attack with Chinese leader Xi Jinping on Wednesday. It was an attack on the Dutch Ministry of Defense that our military intelligence agency has identified and also attributed to China. So yes, of course, I discussed it. This is the first time the Netherlands is publicly calling out China for cyber espionage. Dutch intelligence said Chinese hackers breached a Dutch military network last year. The U.S. and U.K. slapped criminal charges and sanctions on seven Chinese hackers Monday for breaching the email accounts of millions of Americans and Europeans, from White House staffers to lawmakers in Congress and the European Union. Earlier this year, the Dutch government blocked manufacturer ASML from exporting some equipment to China. That's over concerns that the tools could be useful for the Chinese military. ASML is a world leader in tech manufacturing. It's the globe's only source of high-end lithography machines used to make the world's most advanced chips. Tensions in the South China Sea are escalating. The Philippines vowing to counter China's illegal, coercive, aggressive and dangerous attacks. Its president made the statement on Thursday. It focuses on a series of moves by Chinese Coast Guard troops as well as Chinese fishing ships acted out in the Philippines' backyard. It's 200-mile exclusive economic zone. The latest face-off erupted last week. That's when China used water cannons to attack Filipino vessels. At the time, the boats were carrying out a resupply mission to troops stationed off the second Thomas Shoal. Manila said the collision injured four of its personnel and damaged a supply boat. China's defense ministry lashed out at the Philippines, saying China would take firm and decisive measures in the region. The ministry also condemned Washington's show of support for the Philippines. Disputes between the two have become more frequent in recent weeks. Earlier this month, when the Philippines president visited Australia, he said, It is unfortunate that despite the clarity provided by international law, provocative, unilateral and illegal actions continue to infringe upon our sovereignty, our sovereign rights, our jurisdictions. China claims almost the entire South China Sea as its own, overlapping with the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, plus areas claimed by multiple multiple neighboring countries. Worth noting, the Permanent Court of Arbitration found China has no legal rights to rule the region in 2016. You might have noticed how Top Gun Maverick attempted to strip the Taiwanese and Japanese flags off of Tom Cruise's jacket, or how Iron Man 3 inserted a Chinese doctor into the movie who saves the life of Tony Stark. Is it artistic license or something more sinister? These are the issues explored in the groundbreaking new documentary Hollywood Takeover, China's Control in the Film Industry. The NTD original film pulls back the curtain on how Hollywood is helping to further a global adversary's agenda, the consequences that will have on America's future, and what brave individuals are doing to change the tide. The documentary is now available to stream on Epic TV. And for more information about the documentary, please visit HollywoodTakeover.com. There's something magical about the movies that I just love. Hollywood invented America to the world in the old days. And as a medium, it's really powerful. But for some, that power isn't used for good. 
culture, our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. They said, we get a lot of our money out of China. Is there any way you could make this movie a little bit more attractive to the Chinese? Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? I had friends in Hollywood who said, this will kill your career. You won't get funding. They're afraid of even mentioning one line. Chinese influence was playing into what we see in U.S. films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. This is a joke, right? We raised our hand dove right into it. But over time, all of us have been punched in the nose. The Chinese Communist Party followed no rules. What's at stake? The soul of the nation is at stake. We want indoctrination access to America. They could basically take over America without firing a shot because they control access to our minds. And we all know that their goal is global domination. People have been brainwashed without knowing it. That's all for today's China In Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Just click the link down below. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Stop China from skirting U.S. terrorists through Mexico. Former President Donald Trump is pledging to do just that by suggesting a 100 percent tariff on Mexico-built Chinese cars. Our expert weighs in on the proposal. This uh, tariff, if it would enact, uh, be enacted, it would raise prices on American consumers, but it would raise prices on Chinese-produced um, automobiles in Mexico specifically. China making big boost to woo back foreign investors. Who's heading up the effort? The head of the Chinese regime, Xi Jinping. And a major shift in global investment trends. Find out why warehouse developers are ditching China for other markets, bringing India into the spotlight. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.